The death toll in the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria has crossed 41,000. As hope of finding any survivors fades, the focus is shifting from rescue to reconstruction. In Turkey, thousands of buildings have been reduced to rubble. But the widespread damage in towns and cities is not the only permanent scar left on the landscape. Here's a report now from a village in southern Turkey where the sheer destructive power of this earthquake is clear. Since the earthquake struck southern Turkey in the early hours of Monday morning last week, most of the focus, obviously, has been on the consequences for human beings. Far less attention has been on the consequences for the earth itself. But here in the farmland outside Antakya, there is a very good example of that. This is the world's newest valley. During that awful night, as they cowered in their homes, the locals knew that something cataclysmic had happened. But imagine their surprise when they first saw this chasm. We went to the bottom of it for the perspective from down there. But actually, the best way to illustrate what we're talking about here is from above. The local people said that at the time they thought it was an air raid. The sound of explosions created by cracking rock, the flashes by the sparks that flew as the Earth's crust was torn apart. It used to be a flat field. I would ride my motorbike on it, said this boy. It was all an olive grove, which is now bisected by a gorge that in places is the width of a football field. The rift is so deep that a 13-story building could fit in it. This boy said that just after first light that morning, they came out here and found this. They were terrified and started crying. We thought we had witnessed something that's out of this world. Eventually, the cities and towns will be clear of rubble. But this rupture, shaky ground permitting, will endure as a reminder of the power of the quake, the power of 7.8. Just astonishing. That was John Irvine of Independent Television News. Turkey's disastrous earthquake has also exposed President Erdogan's political fault lines. Anger, recriminations, and demands for accountability are echoing across Turkey, just three months ahead of a scheduled election. To discuss this, we turn to Gonul Tol, founding director of the Middle East Institute's Turkey program and author of the book Erdogan's War, A Strong Man's Struggle at Home and in Syria. Gonul, welcome to the News Hour, and thank you for joining us. We, we invited you here because of your professional credentials, but on a personal note, I know you were in Turkey when the earthquake hit. You lost family that night. We are so very sorry for your loss. These numbers are staggering, though, over 41,000 dead. Help us just understand what people on the ground are feeling right now. There is a lot of anger uh, now on the ground over the government's slow response. Uh, it was not only slow, but it was uh, very disorganized, too. And the narrative on the ground uh, from the victims is that Erdogan's government has not prepared the country for the earthquakes and did things that paved the way for last week's tragedy. Uh, the practice of gov uh, granting government infrastructure projects to cronies who cut corners on safety played an important role in the high uh, death toll. And another problematic policy enacted by, by Erdogan government was granting amnesties to unsafe buildings. Uh, and according to state agencies, uh, there are millions of almost more than half of uh, all the buildings in the country uh, received these uh, amnesties. So people understand that. And compounding the problems for, for Erdogan's government is the fact that uh, state agencies, rescue workers were not there on time. And when they finally arrived, uh, they, they couldn't do, they did not want to do 
uh, enough to help the victims, and that really does frustrated a lot of people. Help us understand a little bit about the granting of these amnesties and, and President Erdogan's role in that, because the country did undergo a massive construction boom in recent years. What was behind that, and what exactly was President Erdogan's role in allowing some of those construction companies to get around the enforcement standards? That's right. Erdogan's government rode high on an, uh, on a construction boom uh, starting from, from uh, early years in, in his tenure. And he started almost immediately after coming to power, he stra started granting these government contracts to a handful of cronies uh, that had little regard for environmental concerns or safety regulations. And he granted those contracts without competitive tenders or any uh, regulatory oversight. So I think that really compounded uh, the problem. And on top of that, he collected uh, large sums of money in earthquake tax. And those taxes were meant to build stronger buildings. And apparently, uh, from what we've seen uh, from last week, uh, he has not built strong enough, uh, enough buildings. You know, the Turkish government says that they've ordered over 100 people detained that they say were responsible for those many buildings collapsing. Is that the accountability you want to see here? Not really, because I think these are small private contractors. Uh, I think a little over 100 have been arrested. But I think the bigger problem here is uh, the, the five largest companies in the country, uh, and, and uh, they are very close uh, associates, personal friends of Erdogan, and they have uh, become very rich uh, because of these government uh, tenders. And I doubt they will be held accountable. One of them is called Cengiz Holding. He is one of the richest men in the country, a personal friend of Erdogan, and he has received, according to uh, World Bank reports, uh, $42.1 billion in tenders uh, since Erdogan came to power. Uh, so those people, I doubt, uh, will be held accountable. And actually, on the contrary, last night, uh, there was a government-led campaign to fundraise for the victims, and Cengiz Holding uh, was there. Uh, donating uh, over uh, $160 million. And that happened right after uh, President Erdogan's uh, government uh, gave Cengiz Holding incentives. So even that effort from last night was an effort from, from Erdogan government to provide legitimacy to, to those companies. So, Colonel, the elections are slated for May, right? President Erdogan has declared a three-month state of emergency that will go right up until those scheduled elections. Do you believe they should be postponed? Could they be postponed? No, I think they have to be held on time. According to the Constitution, uh, Turkey cannot hold elections later than June. Uh, but Erdogan tested the waters uh, in the last few days. Uh, one of his close associates suggested that Turkey should not hold elections soon. And the opposition parties responded strongly, saying that it was unconstitutional for Turkey to hold elections uh, after June, June 18th. Uh, so I think Erdogan will probably keep pushing for a later date in the hopes that he could use that extra time to rebuild those cities probably with financial, international financial aid, and use the media under his control to shift the narrative in his favor. That is Gonul Tol, founding director of the Middle East Institute's Turkey program, joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me.